So by now you probably figured out the topic is joy. And joy is yours. That's the end of the story. And if you're not experiencing joy right now, you can rest assured that you are dwelling in the illusion that we describe as separation. You believe that you are separate from God. If you're not experiencing unmitigated joy at this moment, you believe that you are the body that you're carrying around. You believe that you are your history. And you believe that you are worrying about the things that you've got to do yet today and tomorrow and all next week. The seed thought from, for this talk is a, a wonderful quote from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. I hope I said that closely to correct. And it's this, joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. So, if joy is not present, you are somewhere else. You are not fully God realized. You are not experiencing yourself as you were intended to experience yourself. You are experiencing the system of beliefs that we have about the world, our position in it, and all the lists of things that we must get accomplished before X or Y or Z comes along. And everybody does it. So don't beat yourself up for believing the illusion because we're all doing it. In fact, we've been carefully taught to believe in the illusion. We've been very carefully taught that you gotta work hard, you gotta study hard, you gotta get good grades, and if you're really lucky, you'll get a good job and a nice relationship and all that other stuff. And that isn't anything but an exposition of the grand illusion. <clears throat> the grand illusion that we are our bodies, that we are experiencing life. Well, so how do we do about it? How do we do something about that? The bottom line is that it's totally under your control. Totally. Abraham Lincoln, one of our great presidents, said this. He said, folks are usually about as happy as they make up their minds to be. And that's the truth. What gets in the way of experiencing the joy that is your birthright, the joy that indicates that God is present? <laughs> Uh, it's our thinking. Sometimes around the 12-step tables, you can hear the expression, my stinking thinking got me where I am. And that's really the crux of the matter, is we have enormous power. Power to create an image of ourselves in this illusion. And that's what we go about doing. We reinforce the illusion that we're our bodies, that we need to do this or do that. And that's not to say that living in the world is wrong. It's not to say that at all. But to change the paradigm, to change the color of the lenses that you look through. Instead of looking through the mud-colored lenses, let's look through pink lenses. Rose-colored 
lenses. Let's see as the divine sees. Then we have an opportunity to experience the joy that is our birthright. Have you ever wondered how it is that the Dalai Lama, who's the spiritual leader of the Tibetan Buddhists, in exile because the Chinese government deems them a threat, so they're no longer able to live in Tibet. But have you ever wondered how a person in that a position such as that can giggle so much? Do you, do you, have you watched the Dalai Lama on, on broadcasts or seen him? He giggles all the time. And that's a sure sign that God is present. And I'm suggesting that God isn't not present, even if you're not experiencing joy. What is missing is your awareness of the presence of God. That's the crux of the matter. And that's where our stinking thinking gets in the way. Because we think all the things that we think. We think we're our bodies, we think we're our jobs, we think we're our lists, we think we're our worries, and all of that gets in the way of experiencing who we really are. Experiencing the joy that is our birthright. So how in the world do we go about changing how we live in this illusory world. The secret is to know, right down to the tips of your toes, to know that you are perfect just the way you are. Don't get all caught up in trying to be what somebody thinks you should be. Because the world is full of thoughts about you should be this, do that, and don't do that, for goodness sake. The world is full of those thoughts. And the way to free yourself from <coughs> dwelling in that illusion is to just say to all the shoulds that come your way, thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And be who you choose to be. Follow your heart. Do what brings you the greatest joy. Because then you are acknowledging the presence of the divine right where you are. When we get all caught up in following the leader, in doing what mama said we should do, we get into difficulty. It's then that we block our awareness of love's presence. Love, also known as God, is present. Can't say anything about that. It is what it is. God's infinite, unconditional love is everywhere equally present in the universe. There is no place where that is not present. But we, the children of God, have been given infinite power to believe whatever we choose to believe, to create an illusion, to create lists of things to do and not to do. And when we allow our power to get diverted away from understanding who we are, when we allow our power to be used in the creation of these silly illusions, that's when we don't experience joy. If you're living in a world of shoulds, it's hard to be joyful. If you're living in a world of freedom where you are totally free 
to be who you choose to be, where you get to organize your daily activities along the lines of what brings me the greatest joy, what fulfills me the most. Then you have taken a great leap into the realm of experiencing your birthright. Joy, unmitigated joy is your birthright. And if it's not here, something is amiss. And the only thing, the only thing that is amiss is your thinking to the contrary. And so, I've said it a number of times over the last 17 years, you are the captain of your ship. You determine what thoughts are allowed to find a home in your mind. If you allow your mama or all the other people who should have on you over the years, to dictate your life. You are turning your power over to those people who may or may not know anything about you, may or may not have your best interest at heart, may or may not have a clue. So, it's really, really straightforward and simple. The problem is it's not easy because we have a long history of being shooted upon. We have a long history of worrying. The truth is there's nothing, nothing to worry about. Nothing. There's nothing to fear all problems resolve themselves. God's infinite love is always present. Death isn't real. So even if the body gets set aside, it's not the end of your world. It's just a transition into another phase of this thing called your eternal life. Yeah, it might be difficult. Might cause some grief for those who are still on this plane. But it's not, it is not the end of the world. What we call death is not a disaster. It is not a loss. It is not anything other than the opening of one door and the closing of another. So literally, there's nothing to be fearful of. And we've been trained to worry about the golden coins in our account so that we can pay our bills and do all of those things. But I say to you, if you will operate on the basis that you are a divine expression, doing what your highest motivation is on a daily basis, everything else will fall into place because you will become a magnet. You will become a radiant expression of love and you will just learn how to giggle like the Dalai Lama because that's how you'll feel. Because you will know that your birthright includes unmitigated joy. Another expression that you hear around the 12-step tables is happy, joyous, and free. And that is your birthright. So I invite you to become aware of when it is in your daily living that you're thinking has gotten in the way of your joy. And if you want to have more joy, 
change your thinking. Open mic time. Yeah, good thing.